Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Brume Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Agagi. Welcome to The Breakfast of the 11th day of July 2024. We're glad that we could make it this far. Yes. On today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which conflicting court orders CJN vows to deal with errant judges. Another topic we'll be discussing this morning is to analyze the surge of kidnappings and its effect in Nigeria. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. The best investment is in the tools of one's own trade, and that is by Benjamin Franklin. He is known as the founding father of the United States of America. And well, the quote this morning says, the best investment is in the tools of one's, one's own trade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can, that's your investment, doing what you love, having to put your own skills to the test, having to invest in yourself, especially maybe if you're supposed to have a vocational job and maybe you're a plumber or something, it's in your own trade. Because if you don't have that, then you don't have anything. And that's the only way you can flourish by investing in yourself. Yeah, I like the way you said it, invest in yourself, because there's no other business you're doing in this world more than, more than you yourself. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. are the, you are the greatest business, you are the greatest everything, so invest in yourself and be sure that whatever uh, you, you think will be good enough for you, mm -hmm. uh, you are investing in it as well. You are you're taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. uh, your health it matters. Mm -hmm. If you are doing a job that you really love, make sure that you have all the requisite things that you need to do that job and mm -hmm. everything. So uh, investing in yourself is uh, the bottom line, even though the tools are being used, but yourself is the greatest trait. So make sure that you invest in yourself uh, to be able to do anything else that you want to do. Yeah, and I love the fact that you talked about taking care of yourself. Like my mom will always say, she's like, you're your best doctor. Mm -hmm. Because you're the one who knows how you're feeling in your body. Mm -hmm. So for instance, it's okay to say, oh, I want to achieve all of these things. But you still need to take care of yourself. And it's called self-care mm -hmm. for a reason. Mm -hmm. So having that self-care, whether it's just treating yourself to a massage at I a don't spa. Know why it sounds so or, you know, just be you are saying no or just being at home <laughs> relaxing um making sure that you're pampering yourself mm -hmm. it is important that you take care of yourself and like i said those tools are the things that you've put in, into yourself they're the skills the things that you've picked up along the way sometimes those tools are even experience mm -hmm. it could be the experiences that you've gained over the years and you start to use it you're like okay you know what i've done it this way let me do it better this way and if you do not invest in yourself nobody's going to invest in you like you would invest in yourself so yeah. most times some people can stay and be entitled saying oh why is nobody you know trying to invest in me or why is nobody looking at me or why is nobody giving me that opportunity but if you do not put yourself there is a thing about you know putting yourself in the right position so that the right opportunities can come to you and when the right opportunities come to you it's like magic yeah remember when i said that it sounds somehow because a baby saying take care of yourself pamper yourself it just struck me that some people might be thinking that ah, you have to be rich before you pamper yourself pampering mm -hmm. yourself it's not necessarily that if it, you talked about a massage, you have mm -hmm. to go to a massage parlor. Mm -hmm. uh, there's things that you can do that will make your body relax. Mm -hmm. There are foods you eat, there are exercises yeah. you do, there are things that you Essential think oils. about and all that. So Aromatherapy. You don't, the, the, the most important things for our lives or in our lives are uh, uh, next to nothing. They cost nothing. The mm -hmm. best things in life are free, as they Sometimes say. Sometimes sleep so, yeah, is sleep the is, best is big, self care. Big pampering of yes. yourself. So, Try to get that sleep. Don't say I'm hustling all, all the mm -hmm. time and all that. And then if you lose a limb, 
because you can't rest or you, you lose your, your kidney, you lose your heart, you lose whatever, then you won't be there to function optimally. Mm -hmm. So you are the, the greatest trade and your best tool is your body. So take care of yourself as much as you can and the rest will be added on to you. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go over to our top trending stories. This first one says food prices to crash in 180 days. And that is being said by the Greek minister. The minister of agriculture, um, you know, has said that food prices will crash. So food security, Senator Abubakar has come out to say, you know, we're looking at 180 days. Now, I don't know if that's really going to happen, but he has announced measures to reduce food prices within 180 days. And this include a 150-day duty-free import window for certain food commodities and the importation of 250,000 metric tons, each of wheat and maize. These imports will be subjected to a recommended retail price RP, RP, and will adhere to safety and quality standards. The government will support small scale processors and millers with these semi processed imports. Additionally, efforts will be made to restock a national strategic food reserve by purchasing surplus food commodities. Support for smallholders' farmers will continue during the ongoing wet season and will be strengthened during the dry season. Agricultural mechanization will be ramped up to reduce production costs and increase productivity. The government will collaborate with subnational entities and the Federal Ministry of Water Resources and Sanitation to identify and rehabilitate irrigable lands. Youths and women will be engaged in greenhouse cultivation of horticultural crops and the Nigerian military will be encouraged to cultivate arable lands. A renewed hope national livestock Transformation Implementation Committee has been inaugurated to prioritize livestock development. Efforts to enhance nutrition security will include promoting fortified food commodities and scaling up the home garden initiative. The success of these measures will depend on the cooperation of all relevant stakeholders and agencies with the aim of achieving food security and ensuring no Nigerian goes hungry. And I think that's a tagline there ensuring no Nigerian goes hungry. But sadly, a lot of Nigerians are hungry. Yeah, if you talk about wheat and maize, even I don't even know if that's part of the food I eat in the South here. Mm -hmm. um, wheat and maize is not really something we eat. Uh, we're talking rice, we're talking beans mm -hmm. and some other things. Uh, but, you know, it has to start somewhere. The thing is that 180 days, and they're talking about food uh, prices crashing, that means we want to be importing more, which is going to also have a problem on our dollar um, mm -hmm. acquisition and all that. Of which and as have, of yesterday, have, the dollar is looking at almost 1,600. Yeah, so we've been talking about uh, exporting more than importing. And mm -hmm. right now, this measure that they have brought is going to put more pressure on the dollar. And I, I don't know how much that will translate into other things. And when the government says we will, we will, we will. It means that it's something in the future. Mm. It should have been that we are doing this. We are no. doing that. Which means we might go past the wet season that they're talking about and this intervention hasn't come. How much uh, feasibility studies did they do? Mm -hmm. What did they think the farmers needed? Did, you, did they just think they needed tractors? Did they think about other things that they might have needed that mm -hmm. would be like the low-hanging fruits? So after the 180 days, after putting pressure more on the Naira, uh, because of the import that we are using all the dollars to do, uh, we are going to go back to square minus, minus <laughs> 10 maybe, not even zero. Mm. So I'm afraid. So it's like, you know, the seven years of uh, abundance in the scripture. And after mm -hmm. that, there's seven years, years of, of farming. farming. So that is what it is going to be. And like we said the other time, some people might just use the opportunity and hoard the things yes. that will come. I was just about to say because that. Because the farmers will be waiting for the harvest season to get some money mm -hmm. that they can access some of these things that we're talking about. And when it gets to that point, the people who, has the, who have the money now mm -hmm. will be the ones that will have everything that... Uh, My fear is just need. what happens next. And 180 days. Yeah. I, I know that the import window is just 150, so that's minus mm. one month, mm. right? Mm. From the whole, the food prices will crash in 180 days. I feel like it might just be wishful thinking. You know, let's just put something out there. People are complaining, so let's just say, oh, don't worry. In 180 days, everything will be back to normal. But I really don't think so, because even with the things that they've said, helping farmers, I'm not really seeing something that is strategic to be sustainable in the future.
I don't know what the government does. So let me take an instance. In my locality, Kajuk, where I come from, in you know, Ogoda local government of Cross River State, they have started planting rice at this moment. And if you hear of a Baklicky rice, uh, more than 50% of that rice comes from my place. Mm. And they have started planting. There are Baklicky people also have started planting. But this intervention has not started. When will it start? Will they give them money to hire people to scare the birds from the rice? Mm. Is that what is going to be? There has to be the rice that has been planted before any other thing can be done. So what happens to the herbicides? They don't have it now. So if they're going to plant a hectare, maybe they're going to plant half a hectare now because they don't have these things. Mm -hmm. What about fertilizers that will make yeah. it grow? What about uh, every other thing that they will need? They mm -hmm. could have had the tillers, you know, tractors and all that, and mm -hmm. they're also hand handheld tillers that they mm -hmm. could have had in every community. But they didn't do that. They didn't do findings. They didn't ask anybody that is an, an expert mm -hmm. in fact right now and how can we help now that they're talking about a uh, livestock uh, some ministry yeah. of livestock and all mm -hmm. that the person who chaired that thing is the not like a farmer he's mm -hmm. not even a professional farmer he doesn't know anything about it he's just a chairman of a political party so what kind of solutions will he bring mm. that's the point here whenever we need something instead of getting the people who have the knowledge they are experts in the field they don't have to be PhD holders, yeah. but if you take a regular farmer... They should even have experience in that A regular particular. farmer who didn't even go to school will know what the farmer needs, even more than some, some of the people that may have gone to school. Mm -hmm. People who go to school get new ideas, but the people who have the ideas that they have always been using, how much are you doing to improve those ideas? Mm. So I, I don't think, well, 180 days, if you have money, please buy a lot and keep. Somebody said that if you want to eat, ha, enjoy Christmas, buy a bag of rice now. <laughs> because <laughs> it might be... It will be so be expensive by then. <laughs> I'm just hoping that they don't start to hold it. So even the interventions that the government is trying to do, because, you know, humans will always be humans. So even with the intervention that the government is trying to do, in quotes, um, I hope that is fruitful at the end of the day. And I'm really looking forward to where food will be at least cheap. Because it's an essential commodity, like it's a basic Can't necessity. Can't you remember the time that we were doing these palliatives and some councillors, some uh, house of we're that it. were were diverting these things. Mm -hmm. Some of them were even selling trailer loads of this food that was given by the government. Some, some it food even still got happen. bad. Yeah. So, I don't know. If they put uh, a measure in place that will supervise this and be transparent enough, good. Yeah. But we should be looking at a long-term plan. Nigerians exactly. are getting Something used to suffering. If they're going to suffer for the next six months and know that there's no longer any other suffering, we should have that plan. Yeah, I agree. So the House of Representatives, that's the, the next uh, hot, um, top trending issue. The House of Representatives Committee on Customs and Excise, um, led by Honorable Leke Abejide, will investigate activities within bonded terminals and free trade zones to eliminate illegal activities um, uh, during they announced this during an oversight visit to the nigerian customs service headquarters the committee plans to work closely with the nigeria customs service and other relevant authorities to enforce strict measures and restore integrity to these zones ensuring they facilitate legitimate trade and contribute to the nation's economic growth Non-compliant entities may face severe consequences, including possible closure. Honorable Abejide commended the Nigeria Customs Service for significant arms interceptions in Lagos and River State, emphasizing the importance of vigilance and international cooperation. However, he warned against complacency, noting that the presence of such large quantity of weaponry highlights outgoing threats to national security. Despite challenges, the Nigeria Customs Service exceeded its revenue target for the first half of 2024, collecting $2.7 trillion uh, against a projected $2.5 trillion. However, a $318 billion loss due to exemptions and waivers poses a challenge to meeting the annual revenue target of $5.079 trillion. The e-customs modernization project, despite some concerns, is seen as a potential solution to streamline operations and enhance revenue collection. I like it. Nothing much to talk about it. I, I like the last statement which said that, which talked about um, the use of technology, more or less, mm -hmm. and if that can be done, fine. Because I know that in some terminals, there have been CCTV cameras, installation, or budgets for same and all that, and yeah. they are being vandalized because they will expose a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So if 
Did you see that video about like um, so many guns and ammunition? Yeah, that's what they're talking yeah. about. Yeah. And uh, security experts will say, or uh, any expert, by the way, would say that if one thing is discovered and brought to the fore, possibly 10 others have gone unnoticed. Yes. So we should think more about our borders and how porous they are mm -hmm. and think about using technology rather than because we want to make gains out of it, we sabotage the efforts of government at some point. Because mm -hmm. sometimes government have, has good intentions, but the people who are manning these places, uh, they sabotage it. If people get to suffer the consequences of bad behavior, maybe some of these things. Will yeah, I think everything boils down to corruption. Um, a lot of times, Niger some Nigerians can be corrupt. And so even with the borders, they're like that as well. If you go through the Benin Republic um, Nigerian border, you see that people can even cross over. People can actually come into Nigeria without having to stamp their passports. Mm -hmm. um, people, I think there's something they call firewall whereby they ride cars with so many contrabands and nobody's really saying anything. All they have to do is just give you some money, grease your palms, and then they let you in. But it is important that we have enough security in the borders. So when it comes from, you, you can talk about maybe <coughs> drones that are patrolling, you can talk about people who are there making sure that, I think it is important that you, you're diligent with your job. Because when you're not, it's easy to be swayed and someone can just say, you know what, just take this and turn a blind eye. And that's what happens really in our borders. And so when you're talking about ammunition, you can only imagine what has gone unnoticed. Yes, how many cars. <coughs> Sometimes can. I don't know whether the security um, agencies or the security personnel are just tired or sometimes they just want to be wicked, sometimes they just want to be lazy. Mm. If you go to the southeast now, mm. when you're going to the southeast, you will have to pass more borders than you can pass uh, going from, from Lagos to Abuja. Mm. Just in the southeast. Every, every two kilometers or so, you mm. have a... Like a roadblock. Yes. Or, yeah. Then when you, when you meet a roadblock that is manned by the army, they ask everybody to come down. You will come down and you trek. Wow. A, a very, maybe half a kilometer or, or a quarter of a kilometer and go and enter that same bus on the other side. Nobody opens the boot. Nobody checks any luggage. Nothing. Mm. They just make you to walk. To walk. <laughs> That's all. And... What kind of thing is that? What are you really, what are you really so checking for? So if you're for? looking for contraband, you're looking for illegal immigrants or anything, is that how you check it? So if you cannot do any check, just let the people go. But mm -hmm. if you want to do the check, do it. What happens to uh, sniffer dogs or the... Uh, yes. The what mm -hmm. happens to technology and all those things? Mm -hmm. If you don't have those things, you want to do a manual thing, do it. But it doesn't have to be that every two kilometers you have people making you trek. Mm. It, it doesn't make any sense. If you man what roadblock, for instance, and make sure any car that passes there is being checked, we will understand. Yeah. You know, there, there, there's, there's a joke I used to tell my brother. I said, if you are being kidnapped and you're being put in an SUV, the chances of them finding you is really slim. But maybe if you're in a small car, like a salon car that doesn't look so nice, of course they would stop you check the boot, check everything. But if it's an SUV, maybe like a G-Wagon or, or some exotic... If you're in a commercial bus, they might car. not find you because mm. those people... Because you just... You just settle uh, yeah, they just settle you. And it's bribery and corruption. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's important that, you know, we start to tackle these things, especially with the borders, especially with movement. It is... If you are there for a reason, you're there for the security apparatus of the nation. And if you cannot secure the nation, then what are you really doing? Let's just rush do. over the, All right, the, the final top trending story this morning says Senator Natasha quizzes Bank of Industry on $300 million access fund. Senator Nasha, Natasha Akoti Udwaha, chair of the Senate Committee on Local Content, has requested the Bank of Industry, BOI, to explain its utilization of $300 million access fund aimed at promoting local content in the oil and gas sector. This demand was made during a meeting with the representatives from the BOI and the Industrial Training Fund, ITF, to enhance collaboration and capacity building. The BOI explained that it is funded by private sector Nigerian funds, but managed by the government with an annual project budget of $617.7 million. They highlighted your success in attracting $5 billion from international banks in the last five years and outlined your programs, including the Youth Entrepreneurship Support Program, ESP. 
Government Enterprise and Empowerment Programs, GEEP, and IDICE. Senator Akoti Udwahan urged the BOI to include physically challenged individuals in their programs and express dissatisfaction with the low stipends given to students in the Student Industrial Work Experience Scheme. She also called for better synergy between organizations and ITF to ensure students are accepted for this and suggested digitizing the program. The ITF team, which is self-funded with an annual budget of 48 billion naira, described their various training and empowerment programs such as the Skill Up Artisans Super and the National Industrial Skills Development Program, NS NISSDP. They also called for legislative support to mandate government agencies to use ITF for employee training. Well, let's just see how that pans out. And mm -hmm. that's all I can say. Well, it's good that people are looking at uh, mm -hmm. things and asking Quizzing. questions. Mm -hmm. uh, when the questions are asked, we hope that we'll get the right answers. And when the right answers are not there, we hope that these people will have to go for it. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Well done. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break, we'll look at the weather, and when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.